Well, welcome back to the beautiful Pacific Northwest and the land of Platinum Coffee and Pack West Bigfoot. This is David, and we're going to get started right now with this week's Pack West Bigfoot encounter story. Uh, this one is kind of, uh, <clears throat> as you can tell, I usually try to follow the seasons as much as I possibly can with the encounter uh, stories and reports that come into me. Um, and, uh, you know, so if you send me something right now that happened to you in spring, uh, please expect that to be uh, shared around spring. <laughs> I know it seems kind of unfair, but it's not really. I like to keep things a little bit seasonal as much as I possibly can here uh, because that's the season we're in and it really connects us to it. And I just, uh, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a great way to to share these encounter stories. So there you go. This is awesome for fall <laughs> and October. Trucker encounters Bigfoot outside Willow Creek, California. I've been in the trucking industry for decades, three in fact, before I ran into Bigfoot. Yeah, I said Bigfoot, and not just one of them. While there have been some pretty hairy experiences along the journey of being a trucker, none was as literally hairy as the one I experienced outside of Willow Creek, California. Here's what I saw, and the events that led up to me moving back home as quickly as possible after that cold October evening. <sighs> From Florida to California. I had moved to Northern California during the summer of 1999 when I would be, well, I guess attacked is what I thought at first by a Bigfoot or a couple of them or more. I think while hauling some produce, pumpkins to be exact. Florida was great and we moved back home to Fort Myers, Florida and I'm glad to be here now and out of that monster infested Pacific Northwest. Seriously, you all have a problem up there and it's not logging or spotted birds or some tree killing fungus. It is, it's Bigfoot. The move there to your monster infested Pacific Northwest was out of necessity period. I was laid off right before and desperately needed work. I was a new husband and about to be a new dad. So with a few calls I was able to land a great job opportunity in Northern California hauling produce and such for a very large grocery chain up there. I'd be hauling all over from the northern part of the state to Southern Oregon here and there. But mostly I would be working the Northern California routes. And on the side, I would be hauling costumes for that Halloween store as well. It was, a great, it was great being busy again, and the money was good. Finally, the new wife and I and the baby that was coming would be okay. By September, the wife was showing, and I was hauling produce and some weeks Halloween costumes on the road again. Being from Florida, I heard of the skunk ape, and to be up front, a friend of mine had told me uh, they, they had seen one once along Alligator Alley. She and her husband were truck drivers as well and were working that week on some deliveries for Winn-Dixie quite a few years back. They had been traveling the old highway when they saw a tall, almost dark black, but somewhat skinny, they'd say, skunk ape creature cross the road one early evening. It was dusk in that time of night on the stretch of on that stretch of highway. It was pretty quiet, sparse traffic for the most part, they told me. But there it was, larger than life. It darted about 50 yards or less in front of them, actually making her husband apply the brakes just in case. It was fast, and she said it had to be at least a head taller than the hood of their truck, and they had a semi just like mine. Anyway, I'd heard of Bigfoot and a skunk ape and believed what they said they saw. So yeah, I was a believer, and today, I for dang sure believe, because I not only saw one, but I was basically attacked by two or more at least. No, not physically attacked. I think they wanted my goods, but was in the truck, and they wanted me to stay put so they could take it. It was pumpkins that week. That is what I was hauling, and it was an open-air trailer that I hauled them in. You know, the trailers with sideboards. I simply backed up, hitched it on, and took off. There were other types of trailers for hauling produce like that by then, but this particular farm was old school for sure, so it was the open-air trailer for me. I would haul from Central California with two stops that week, one in Willow Creek, the other in a small town called Eugene, Oregon. 
I decided to start with Eugene, Oregon and work my way back home. It was the smartest idea actually, but one that I would consider, well, maybe fate, I suppose, or whatever you want to call it, who knows. What I do know is that I got the scare of my life that night, one that had me off the road for about a week after the fact, and sticking to spending nights on the road at truck stops or a local Walmart, and then from then on out. Not once did I pull off and sleep along any minor highway ever after that night while I lived out here, or there, northbound. I got up early that day and headed out of Reading, where I lived, and hooked up with the supplier I was hauling for. Once I was loaded up and secure, off I went. I would travel back up. It would not be a long jaunt, trucker time. That would be about six or so hours, give or take. The I-5 pass into Oregon was long and steep and cold even during the still somewhat early autumn. But I would plan on the deliver. Uh, I would, I would plan on the delivery that day and head down to Willow Creek that afternoon, stopping to rest for a night halfway in between, or further if I could hack it. I made really good time. I was in Eugene about five and a half hours later. They unloaded, and even I pitched in, and I was back on the road in an hour or so. I decided I would drive back down I-5 and take 96 and cut over and back down into California and onto, the, uh, onto uh, Willow Creek. That was the plan. Southbound. So I was trucking on. This is really worth mentioning and actually left a rather weird feeling in me later on when I, when I looked back on the whole day and evening. But while I was driving, there was an, uh, an AM radio station at the time playing some old recorded episodes of a guy named Art Bell and his Coast to Coast AM show. The subject that night, well, my late afternoon actually, was like shapeshifters, I believe, natives, and how Bigfoot or Sasquatch fit into these legends. For me, it was pretty, it was just pure entertainment that kept my mind on the road. But all the while, I was about to meet this creature head on, literally. As I said, it was late afternoon by the time I hit Highway 96, and I started heading west, then southbound to the infamous little town known to all Bigfooters and even skeptics alike, Willow Creek. Well, I am not the latter. I am not a skept no skeptic today. I am a firm believer in Bigfoot, and I am in the affirmative that they are not kind or benign things either. These are animals, and they are unpredictable, and yes, powerful too. The River Trinity River and the whole corridor along Highway 96 was beautiful at that time of the year. If there is one thing I do miss about the Pacific Northwest is the seasons and how they change. But the colors of the trees were fading to black shadows as the sun finally fell behind the mountains to the west. I was still outside or just north of Hoopa a bit and Willow Creek. And that is where the craziness would start and end. It was just about dark when I pulled over to get some rest. I could have probably driven, though. Uh, driven through, but I am an extremely safety conscious and person and would prefer not to end up in that river that particular night. Sarcasm intended, Dave. I pulled over on a sort of wide shoulder on the southbound side and decided to eat and get some sleep. I did have one of those fancier trucks with a small shower in it so I could clean up before dinner as well. I had gotten cleaned up and decided to eat El Fresco, you'd say. So I went over to the ridge, looking over the river, and sat as the rest of the day faded away. I suddenly realized I was in the forests of the Pacific Northwest, <laughs> and that kind of spooked me a bit. But I sat there eating away, then then headed into the truck anyway. It was about 9, 9.30 p.m., I remember, when I first heard something, something really strange. It was like someone yelling at, at another person from pretty far away in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I could not make out the words, so I hopped up into the front of the cab and lowered the window a bit. Sure enough, someone was yelling from up above me along the mountainside, but they were pretty far off, I could tell. And what they were saying was still lost to me, as it was either a really weird language or language or just it was just too far away to make it out exactly. The latter is what I believed at the time. It was a kind of creepy. It was kind of creepy sounding to hear that yelling out there in the middle of the woods and in the dark. I decided to make sure the handgun was loaded and everything was locked down tight. 
This would not be the first time someone tried to steal from me, actually. That happened once in the middle of Florida, but that is a story for another day and another channel. 11 p.m. and I was wide awake. Something made the whole truck rock for a second. To do something like that, I knew, took a lot of power. Was someone trying to tow me away? Uh, were they tearing apart the truck and getting at the pumpkins? Did, did something like a tree fall on the trailer and I did not hear the crash, just felt it? My mind was running fast through the possibilities. As I made my way yet again to the cab and into the driver's seat, I turned on some of the lights on the outside of the cab, but had none for the trailer. No, no, no area lights, at least. I sat there looking out as far as the lights would let me when whack! Something slapped the passenger side of the truck, and again the truck began to rock a bit. Not from the slap. That, that was a slap. The rocking seemed to be coming from the trailer. Someone was trying to steal the produce, I thought. Immediately, I, I called into the local police department, Highway Patrol. That was what you always did first. Unfortunately, they were pretty far away. It would take a half an hour, they said, at least to be on scene. I decided at least to try to scare them off. The Great Pumpkin. I rolled the window down a bit, and before I said anything, I listened first. I could hear mumbling. Voices, you could say, and movement from the back of the truck. I could not make out the words still, but I heard them. <clears throat> and it was more than one person, as one would answer back from the opposite, opposite side of the truck. I yelled out that I was armed and getting out of the truck. I also made a, a bit of a fib and said, I, I've shot someone before and would not hesitate again. Funny looking back on it now, but I did. The mumbling or talking stopped abruptly. The movement seemed to actually move off across the road instead of just stopping altogether. Maybe that scared them and they thought better of it and ran off, I thought. Yeah, no. Instead, they simply moved into the shadows a bit di deeper, waiting to see what or who I was, I suppose, and see if I would stick around. I opened the door, stepped down, and kept the gun pointed down and no finger on the trigger. I practiced gun safety like every other law-abiding citizen who owns one, of course. But I am today and was then not afraid to use it. I just had no reason until that night. I took the flashlight in the other hand, turned it on, and saw pumpkins everywhere, smashed on the ground and smeared all over the place. <clears throat> However, I saw some on the road. It was as if they were dropped there. They were not damaged at all that I could see. Not those ones, at least. I pointed the light up the hillside across the road, and that was when I freaked out red eyes. Not one pair, but several pair were looking down in my direction. The scream came so loud that I lost all sense of everything. I hit my knees at that sound, and in response, well, be honest, I pulled, I pulled the trigger. Hey, I thought some crazy animal was about to strike. Bang! I heard yet another scream. I was not sure if I hit it, and that was the reason, or it was now mad or scared itself at the noise I had caused. Either way, there was more screaming, and it grew louder and louder until I, I just couldn't take it anymore. I got up and ran back to the cab of the truck. No sooner did I get in and lock the doors did I see what would change me for a very long time. It was a Bigfoot. Well, I saw it too, but there were at least three out there, maybe more. It was standing there, head and shoulders above the hood of my semi-truck, if you could believe it. In the light, it, its face seemed really dark, menacing, and the black holes for eyes were just adding to its freakish, monster-like features. It was covered in hair, from what I could tell, except around the eyes a bit, and the forehead. This was all wrinkled into an ugly-looking scowl of some kind. And its big teeth were showing, and I could hear this monster of a thing growling at me. However, that deformed ape-like look that some people report they have is pretty spot on. <clears throat> While I hate to remember that face, I do, and it looked like a deformed and almost psychotic-looking gorilla. <clears throat> its shoulders were massive, and I had to, and had to be four feet wide at least. And this thing simply towered above the hood of my truck. It moved so fast as a ghost would in a haunted house, and then the screaming started again. 
They were all in on the screaming. And even behind the, the thick glass windows and metal, I could feel it. And I had to hold my hands over my ears as the sound actually hurt. It was so loud. With the screaming came the almost destruction of the trailer and all the pumpkins in it. Without warning, they, these Bigfoot, started knocking the trailer around and I could see in the rearview mirror pumpkins flying and smashing all over the ground. All but the cab I was in was being smashed and broken and tossed about the ground. Wild men? No. Wild animals, more like it, was trashing everything. It was getting louder and crazier every second that passed. I watched as one, the one I think that stood in front of the truck moments before it, it literally ran from across the road and started tearing apart the wood frame of the trailer. Then it started to walk towards the cab and me, slowly and weird enough, it went to all fours. <clears throat> I lowered the window, yelled, and fired off another round from the handgun. Bang! They fled faster than they came, but kept on screaming as they headed now down towards the river. For a split second, the one on all fours stopped. And after all the others ran off, it stood up and made for the ravine in two large, weird-looking strides. 911, what's your... Eventually, I could see the red and blue lights casting themselves across the ravine, and I knew safety was on its way. By the time the state troopers, two of them, showed up, I was out of my truck with my gun holstered, surveying the damage done. There would be a massive incident report with my company, but all that worked itself out just fine. What was not included in the report was the fact it was Bigfoot that caused the damage, not the, and I quote, persons who did. It was funny, though, the state troopers did use the term persons as the culprits. However, here's the deal. Before I left, and especially but, but, but before the, the state troopers left, the younger one of the two said he believed me. And this was not the first time someone was harassed along that particular stretch of highway by these things. But he also said he would deny saying that. Not six months later, I moved my family and I back home to Florida, and we are all the happier for it. You people have monsters up there, literally, giant ape-like monsters. But that is my story encounter story, Dave. Thanks, Robert.